All right. You ready to get started here? Okay. Let's move on. Hey, uh, we want to start the auditioning for the wise man. That would be me. Oh, okay. Welcome. Um, what are you doing? Uh, this is my wife and for, for the audition. Uh-huh. Uh, you really don't need to do that quite yet. I see here your name is Frank Cos... what? Uh, Cos Grove. Cos as in cosmic and Grove as in uh, orchard. Is that Irish? Uh, correct. Ooh. Do you speak Irish? Uh, is that required for the part? Uh, did one of them travel by camel from Ireland? I didn't even know it was Ireland. It's called Ireland yet. Um, I thought all I had to do was present the gift to the baby Jesus. Oh, no. Uh, no, you're, you're fine. We were just trying to spark up conversation. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not too good with people. Really? Oh, never would have guessed. Um. Um, you know, that's why I thought this part would be great for me. You know, no talking, no uh, interacting with anybody, just, uh, you know, kneel. He's, he's kneeling again. <laughs> Back at well, he really wants this part. Wow. Well, uh, that's a good kneel for sure there, uh, Frank. Did he just uh, say darn to you know, uh, the other reason why I thought it'd be great for this role is uh, I'm very smart, you know, always have been, and, uh, you know, smart and wise, you know, seem to be the same thing. Uh, they're really not. Uh, you know, regardless, uh, I've seen the attempts of the live nativity from, uh, you know, lesser earthlings before me, and uh, I, th I think I should be the one to play the wise man. Did you just call humans earthlings? Uh, like I said, I'm not too good with people. Uh-huh. Well, there's a line that we've taken from the Bible and scripted for the wise men. Uh, do you mind just picking that up and reading wise men number one, please? Oh, okay. Okay, well, uh, wise men number one. <coughs> oh, my. <coughs> wow. Whew. I had a dream that was not turn to Harry. We must go back to our country another way. All right. Thank you. Wait. Matt. Wait. Uh, this is illogical, Captain. Pardon me? <laughs> I just nailed that reading. There should be no uh, next, but uh, instead, welcome to the Alive Nativity. Uh, so uh, where's my rope? Um, yeah, listen, we appreciate your enthusiasm and all, but what are you doing? What? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm Googling uh, MAGA. Uh, it means great. Uh, I was great. And, uh, you know, you uh, casting me and putting me oh. in this role, uh, it would be tantamount to uh, Peter Jackson, like casting Sir Ian McKellen as Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. Oh, boy. <laughs> Listen, the wise men wanted to worship him. You, however, sir, are worshiping yourself. Seek and you will find. I think you, Frank, you need to do a little more seeking before you can play a wise man. You know, they saw after the Christ child, uh, they should go back, uh, report to King Herod, and do what they were told. You know, stay out of trouble. Listen, that may have been the smart thing, sure, but not the wisest option. Listen, they saw the Christ child. It changed them. They followed a star started out as a mission for a king, became null and void when they met the true king. You know, I don't know. There's a system. You stick with the system. Do you get what this is about? They saw what matters. Look, uh, the wise men travel thousands of miles with very little information, and I, too, have come a long way to be at this audition. Okay, listen, your audition sheet says you live five blocks from this church. <laughs> I see. You're playing.
playing hardball. Okay, let's see, uh, let's see if I can give you some gifts here. Uh, oh, how about uh, oh. some worn jelly bellies? Uh, oh, well, like ew. gold. Oh, uh, what else is, is he there? bribing us? Oh, my driver's license says Frank. It's uh, Frank Innocence. Get it? Uh, Where do these people come from? See what I have from Mur. I have some from Mur. What a funny word. Mur. Does he need. <laughs> Mur. It sounds like a constipated cow. Does he need medication? Okay, listen. We are not the ones you should be offering gifts to. Let me try to help you out here, buddy. Read what the Bible says about the wise men as far as their character. Right there. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> it says, They, having heard the king, went their way, and behold, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, until it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. See, you aren't ready to be a wise man. You don't when you don't have anything else running your life, logic or feelings, but simply Christ, listen, don't miss what's important here. For everyone else in the nativity, nothing else mattered what, but what arrived that night. That's what makes you truly wise. Ah, cat. That's it, my oh. cat, Mirna. <laughs> I knew I couldn't be outsmarted. Okay, you, you named your cat Myrna. Hmm. You and a cat. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just not too good with people. Mm. Oh. Is it going to be like this all day? Come on, Frank. Pull it together, buddy. Come on. I don't know. If I, what is, is he crying? Thank you. Is he singing? <laughs> oh boy. If we have to do this all day. Now who's this guy? He looks lost. Is this the auditions? Uh, yes, it is. You're in the right place. Oh, good, good. Uh, I, I, my name is George Clooney. Uh, ah. Not the actor. I know we look alike. Um, ah. And you're probably wondering if we are uh, related and stuff. I'm actually uh, checking on that thing, the family.com thing, and hopefully. Sure, yeah. Well, uh, welcome, George. So Thank you. Are you here to audition for the live nativity? Yes, excited. I'm excited about it. Uh, I think if you allow me to be a part of this, uh, of this part, I, I think I could really add a lot to it. Well, great. What character would you like to audition for today? Well, I, I was looking at the script. I think you guys call it the Bible. Uh, and um, the, the character is actually not in the play. Uh, he's in the play, but he's not in the nativity scene, per se. Um, yeah, and I was thinking if we could add him this year okay wait you want to audition for a character that's not even in the live nativity wow you're so easy to talk to that's what everybody says about you this is great yes exactly um if, if you allow me i think i could help you to really chew up the scenery here help me help you uh which character are we talking about king herod herod right you're feeling it right you're wondering probably the same thing. Let it, give it a minute. Let it wash over you. Wondering what? Yeah, why the king didn't, de didn't do a little cameo in the nativity scene. Uh, after all, he's the one that started the whole thing with the census. And, and so why would we leave him out? He's the bad guy in the story. Uh, well... Every, every great story has a villain, right? Darth Vader, J.R. Ewing, oh. Gas Prices, we Stay got Puff, one. Marshmallow Man, we got one on our hands King Herod. Today. He no? sends the wise man 
to go and check things out, sir? Okay, I, you're right. I suppose that's why you're the director. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, he could be a wise man, right? And, and, and then boom goes the dynamite. There he is, laughing his mean, manical, hatred laughter. <laughs> I've got you this time, my pretty. And your little drummer boy, too. <laughs> um, I think you just quoted a spy movie and well, Wizard of Oz. At the that's same what I'm talking time? about. That's what I'm talking about. Let's, let's change the greatest story ever told. He wanted to kill Jesus. He wanted to kill all the male babies around so he could still be king. He tried to outsmart God. He almost did. Um, no, he didn't. Not even close. Listen, why don't you just pick a character that was an actual wine witness to the greatest story ever told? I don't really want to. All the, all the characters there, they all are poor, they are dirty, they have no flashy clothes. It's no fun. That's the only way it works, George. No. George. My, my, let's do it my way. Come on. My idea is a great idea. Let, let's do the story. My story. Yeah. That is where you and so many other people are getting it wrong. It's not your story, George. It's not about you. It's his story. Sorry, the script does not say George all over it. I would love for you to play a part in this story. But when you've made it all about you, and your ideas, we lose sight of the very purpose. We celebrate the greatest story. Okay, all right. My ego is not always my amigo. You know. uh, I, I was looking at that script, the, the Bible, and, and, and I saw another character maybe I could play. Um, I was thinking the shepherd, you know, he saw an angel, he carries a stick. You know, he has character. Okay, sure. Great. Oh, I have an idea. What, what if he's not really a shepherd, but he's a time traveler, and he gets transported to the 8th century BC, and he, and he knows all this stuff, and he helps people, and he saves the world from destruction and despair? That's what Jesus did. Next. No, okay, wait, 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 wait. All right, listen, and only because you have such character. Okay, but listen, I don't want any of these shenanigans you pulled here today. All right, hurry up and get ready. I don't think he's entirely well. All right, I'm ready to see people who actually want to audition, maybe for Mary. Next. Hey. Uh, I'm here. Uh, are you here to audition? Yes, I'm here to play Mary. Well, you do have to audition. Okay, uh, what's that? Oh. Audition means that you read a script and I see if you'd be great to play Mary. Oh, see, I just thought if I showed up, I got the part. No, honey, it doesn't work that way. Tell me, why do you want to audition? Well, <laughs> that's funny. Um, excuse me, did she just? I'm ready. Well, I'm glad you're ready. Uh, tell me why you want to audition. Well, my mom made me. She said, it would be good. she said it would be good for my personality, but I think I have an awesome personality. Well, you know, Mary was the son of God. She had a lot on her mind. She even had an angel talk to her, set her life on a whole new course. Yeah, that's cool. And she was also worshipped, and that's cool too. And I would like to be worshipped, and my mom didn't think of that, and I did. And that's why I have an awesome personality. 
uh, sweetheart, it wasn't about Mary. It's about the child she carried that we worship. Huge difference, okay. my dear. Look, Ms. Director, do I have to say anything? Can I just kneel and look at the baby Jesus? I can even look to Joseph and back to the baby Jesus. So do I get it? I don't think you do on so many levels. Listen, let's try this if you're ready. Uh, let's try reading Luke 149. It's right up there. Go ahead and read that. Why don't you read 46 through 49? Mom didn't tell me I had to read. Ugh. You do know how to read, don't you? Yeah. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has looked at the humble state of his handmaid. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, way cool. Uh, what are you doing now? I'm Facebooking and tweeting this really awesome moment to my followers. Listen, you have 49 followers, and two of those are your grandparents who don't even know how to use Twitter. Look, I see how hard it is for you and even some adults to not believe that it's all about you. In a sense, we all worship something other than God. You know, that place where you pour out your best energies, the thing that defines who you are, the thing you can't absolutely live without, you know, the kind of God that dies when you don't plug it into the wall at night. Ouch. Okay. Guilty. True. Um, I want to do this. I want to be Mary and look longingly at baby Jesus. Get... Okay, listen, we think we have another part for you. It's not a flashy roll, well, or even a roll at all. Doesn't warrant a lot of tweets, but it could be the greatest roll of your life. Greatest roll of my life? I'll do it. Uh, we haven't told you what the I don't care. Is. I'll do it. Are you sure? Totally. What is it? Props. You'll be in charge of the manger scene. What? Oh, this is a workout today. All right. Wow. I think uh, we need to move on here. Let's let's move on to the angel. What do you think? All right, let's keep things moving. Uh, we want to audition for Angel. Who's next? Next. Hey, y'all. I guess I'm next. I'm here for the audition. Okay, great. We're right here, sweetheart. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself before you read. Well, you're not going to believe this. Oh. But my name is Angel. I've heard them all over the years having a name like that. I bet you have. Uh, what made you want to audition for the role of Angel in the Nive Nativity? Well, you know, I've done a lot of things in my life. And having a name like Angel, I've done a lot of community theater. So I just think it's about time I should do this. I see. Yep. I have done everything from Little Orphan Annie. I did Little Orphan Annie. Annie? Yep, the Little Orphan one. You know the Little Orphan one? Okay, I see. Yep, I've done everything from Maria in West Side Story to Phantom in Phantom of the Opera. Uh, you, you played the Phantom? Well, yeah. They were short men that summer, and I don't let an obstacle stand in my way. Well, my, my phantom was a little bit more soprano than baritone, though. Well, you know, you sound more than qualified. Well, I should hope so. Well, I've done every part in the live nativity except my name, the angel. It's about time. Okay. 
why don't you do this? Go ahead and grab a script there. Why don't you read the angel lines? Okay. <clears throat> Joseph, son of David, oh, oh. don't be afraid to take for yourself Mary, your wife, for it is she. Uh, okay, um, can uh, you uh, go ahead and stop? Uh, Wait I'm a minute, sorry, please. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, you do realize this is, a music, is not a musical, and you were actually singing the script? Oh, mm -mm, my bad. I just thought we could jazz it up a bit, you know? You know, a virgin with child is pretty jazzed up, don't you think? I suppose so. My bad. Well, okay. Listen, go ahead. Take another shot at it there. Take another shot? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Mary, your wife, shall conceive of the Holy Spirit and bring forth a son. Thank you. Um, well, you read that passage really great. Um, let's do it again, but this time maybe uh, I, more... I'm sorry. I got to interrupt you right there. I got to interrupt you right there. I just had an oh wow moment. You know, the angel. The angel, well, uh, she made the biggest announcement of all time. Well, this was the biggie. I mean, if you look at all the announcements throughout all history, while she made the biggie, this was like, it was the first instant message. She was the, she, I am Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. She did. Okay. Well, you know, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. An instant messenger. Okay. Why don't you read it again? Uh, uh, uh. I'm sorry, I just can't do that. I can't, it's too much responsibility. That's just too much responsibility to say those lines. What no method acting could ever get me ready. I for don't that part. want you to act. I want you to put yourself in the angel's shoes. Angel's head shoes? Uh. Figure of speech. Um, what I mean Wings. Is, I bet you want me to put myself in the angel's wings. Okay. Listen. What I mean is you're supposed to carry out the great announcement. As you put it, be an instant messenger to the world, to your coworkers, to your neighborhood, your group of friends. So why don't you think of it on those terms? You lost me there. You lost me there. How about I sing Wind Beneath My Wings? Did you ever know that you're my hero? Oh, you're everything Shh. I wish I could be. Listen, I and want I you to stop holding on to what you know and what you're so comfortable with. Just surrender. Trust that I have a plan and a purpose for this. I know you have doubts. But I want you to dive in. You want me to dive right in here? Dive in. Just dive in. Just dive in. Okay. I'm going to dive in. Right here. Right here. <clears throat> okay. Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take for yourself Mary, your wife. For it is she who will conceive. Yes. And she shall bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. Yes. For it is he who will save his people from their sin. That was a really great angel, angel. You mean it? Yes, I do. You like me? You really, really like me? I can't wait to tell about I got the part. Oh, okay. Well, hold up. I didn't say all that, but we'll get back to you. In the meantime, maybe you could put that name of yours to some use. You know, you already are a messenger, and you have the greatest news ever told. Oh, there I go again, making it all about me. My bad. My bad. She's good, though. I do like her. Let's put her down on the list. I really do. All right. We're ready to hear auditions for the role of Joseph. Next. Hi, I'm Joel. 
Oh, hey, Joe. You're here to audition for the role of Joseph today, yes? More or less. Well, in all honesty, my wife told me to. Okay, um, so you didn't really volunteer for this role? No. Say it ain't so. Wish I could, but my wife says I'm kind of a caveman. Says I watch way too much Sports Center and care too much I'm about NASCAR than I do about the world <laughs> that I do about the body of Christ. Oh, I see. Well, you know, Joseph's a big role, the earthly father of the Messiah. He trekked from the hometown of Bethlehem 300 miles on foot just to register for the census. Married a woman that was pregnant with the Son of God. Those are pretty big shoes to fill there, Joe. About that, I should have probably auditioned for the role of the shepherd. All they do is see sheep and tend to themselves. Again, it was my wife's idea for me to do Joseph, because that's my full name. Joseph Arlene Stelman. Arlene? Yeah, my mom was a twin. Her sister's name was Arlene. She, I was the third child of the family and no girls, so I got my aunt's name as my middle name, Joseph Arlene Stelman. Embarrassing, humiliating. It just makes a grown man want to run and hide when you hear your mama call your full name. Joseph Arlene Stillman, put that cat down. God didn't make him on this earth to make boomerangs out of. Mama was very sensitive towards feline critters. Well, I guess someone needed to be. Uh, you just might be a perfect role for Joseph, Joe. More or less, I'm just not seeing what you're seeing. Here's the deal. All those emotions that you felt, all your confusion and embarrassment, humiliation, Joseph felt all those things. I've seen the light nativity. He always looked so happy looking down at Jesus. See, there ain't nothing of those emotions in that manger. Listen, how do you think Joseph got to that moment? What do you think were the emotions going through Joseph's heart and his soul and his mind? when an angel delivered the news that Mary would be carrying the Son of God. Never thought of it like that. I just thought that he said okay and be good with it. As you would say, more or less, it was probably a major blow to his world. Don't you think this would be good news at first, Joseph? Or do you think he had to wrestle with that, with what everyone would think? Well, more... I'm a type of more live and let live kind of guy, but I'm guessing it was not his will, but God's will. Exactly. Kind of like my situation, not my will, but my wife's will. Oh, hold on. Now you've gone back. You've gone off track again there. Listen, speaking of union, Joseph, after hearing that news, being a righteous man, he wanted to divorce Mary. So he wanted it to be quiet, wanted to be put out in the public. Back then, even during an engagement, it took two eyewitnesses to legally get a divorce. He thought Mary was unfaithful. It wasn't until the angel said to Mary, or to Joseph, to take Mary home for his wife that Joseph actually followed. Well, if Joseph fought and wanted all those things, then maybe I'm right for this role. I think you are. I think you nailed your audition. Uh, he's, he would, son, would say the same thing 33 years later as he died for the, on the cross for our sins. Yeah, I'm sure glad he did that for me. I'll remember that when I'm staring at a baby in the manger. It's, I guess that's what you theater folks call getting into character. Something like that. All righty then, one more thing. Do I have to wear that biblical robe thing? Yes, Joe, you do. Can I just try something different and wear my camel hunting pants? It's kind of like a robe. Joe, not your will. Yeah, I get it. Joe. Yes, ma'am? Show us that pose one more time. More or less. That's a good pose. That's a good pose. I like that guy. We got to write his name down, too. That's a good Joseph right there. All right. I think we're ready for Mary now. What do you think? Yeah, let's go ahead and cast the part for Mary. Next. Which, by the way, is completely opposite from Mary. Well, 
Welcome, Connie. Um, so thanks for taking the time to come out today. Are you ready to portray the role of Mary for the live nativity? Oh, I'm sorry, one second. What is it? Is she on the phone? The food is in the refrigerator. Oh. Um, don't you know how to put your food in the microwave? I've had that call before. Okay. Put it in the microwave for four minutes on high. On high. Put her, put her son on the phone, please. Hi, sweetie. Hey, can you help your dad cook his dinner? <laughs> okay. So put it in the microwave for four minutes. Yep. That's it. Good job. Okay. Um, okay, put your dad back on the phone, please. Enjoy. I'm sorry. My world just never stops. Totally okay. Been there. You know, you have a lot in common with Mary. Her world didn't stop either. You're right. Which is why I thought it would be perfect to try out. I mean, I've seen the live nativity so many times. I mean, I can hold a baby and just stand there. Heaven knows I have three. Well, all right. You ready to read some lines for Mary? She has lines? I mean, I didn't think she has lines. I always thought she just poses and looks at baby Jesus like this. And then every once in a while, she'll look up at Joseph. And then, G and then Mary does that Jesus to Joseph, Joseph to Jesus pose. <laughs> I can do that. But you can read lines, right? It's, it's Mary. She's the mom of the Son of God. I wouldn't even know what she sounds like. Listen, I assure you, the lines are straight from the Bible. That's what makes our script. Yeah, but... But what? I, I read the script or the Bible. Watch. <clears throat> Luke 1 30, the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Yes, and? Well, I don't know if I found favor with God. I would hate for my words or my life to misrepresent what happened that day, but I can hold baby Jesus and look longingly at him. I hear what you're saying, Connie. That's what we should all do this time of year, mm -hmm. every day. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my mom. She hasn't been doing so good. What? Well, one second. Hello? I really like her, but I Hi, mom. to leave the phone at home. Well, right now, I'm right in the middle of auditioning for Mary, for the live nativity. Yes, the Virgin Mary. Yes, mom. I really like that. Anyways, what's, what's going on? Okay. Yeah, no, that's not a problem. I'll go over after this. Okay. Yeah, it, no, we're fine, Mom. Anyways, your grandson already cooked dinner for us, so we're okay. Okay. What? Okay, go ahead and just tell me who's on your favorite news station when I get there, okay? I don't have time right now. I have to go. Okay. All right. Bye. I love you, Mom. Well, I really ruined this, so I'm just going to go. Hold, hold on there, Connie. I think, uh, I think Mary's a good part for you. We, uh... We like you. You know, just as Mary had doubts and questioned the angel, she even asked, how could this be? I can see that you doubt too there, Connie. You see, Mary was favored. That means she was gracious and caring, considerate, freely giving of her love. I think you totally embody that, Connie. Well, I, I don't feel those things, to be honest with you. You know, as a mom and as a wife, I always just feel like I'm gripey, yelling, and trying to stay one step ahead of, ahead of everything when I feel like I'm always just failing. Listen, I want you to do something. I want you to pick that up right there. I want you to read Luke 1, 26 through 38. Oh, okay. <clears throat> In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. 
Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left. So what do you think? I don't know. The angel said she was highly favored. I'm just, I'm just me. Connie, you're his child too. Your name is beautiful to the creator of the universe. It just seems impossible. But you just read that nothing's impossible for God. You're going to do great, Connie. Yeah. Okay. I like how you say my name. And, you know, maybe I can do this, and my world would just spin slower, even if it's just for one night. And I can just look longingly at Jesus. You don't have to wait. Well, a wise woman once said, may it be to me as you have said. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile, until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, he shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. How fitting it is that you were born amongst a mess, in a barn full of animals and hay, in an unsafe, fallen world. No palace to shield you from the world, but a full view of humanity, from a barn no less. As you grow, your story will become the greatest story ever to be told for centuries, from one generation to the next. Nations will be divided because of your birth. Calendars will be divided in the light of your birth. 
the world in all of its busyness won't recognize you at first. But some will realize a Savior entered the world. You will see the hurt, the anger, the pride, every hidden shame and frailty. And yet, you will still love. You will see the true worship and you will see some run to empty wells for a quick fix. And yet, you will still love. When people read about you, they won't see a king's way of life, but you will be called the king of kings. A king's crown was not bestowed on you, but you will die with a crown of thorns on your head as you give your life so that many may have eternal life. A real life. Yes, you will hear the words, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. You'll, with him, he will say, pleased I am indeed. Yes, so fitting for the Son of God to be born in a manger amongst the mess, the world's mess. You will hear their cries and weep for them. You will hear their prayers and heal them. You will die a cruel death and rise again for them. Some will see that though the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, you, my son, came to give them life. Just as the prophet foretold the little one, the Lord will give a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, God with us. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Let's give them a big hand this morning. What a wonderful job they did today. You know, but when you look at the story of Jesus and you look at the birth of Christ and you hear all that was said even up here, you can, you can begin to imagine how many people were involved in the coming of Jesus. How many people were involved into his birth? Even Herod wanting to be a part, part of that to, because Herod created the census. And then, you know, he, he did, Herod, even being evil, had a part in it. But when you look in the birth of Christ, when you look in the lineage, you begin to see people that, that had issues of life, but yet God used them anyways. I, I just remember reading Rahab the harlot and how she's in the line of Christ. Just even King David was an adulterer and a murderer and God used him. You know, you could go through and you could read of the kings and, and how evil they were, but yet, yet still God's promise was fulfilled through them. When God has a plan, he makes it happen, amen? He made a way for Jesus to come. And, and I look at this I, and I listen to this script today. I listen to the people talk. The thing that jumped out at me the most was when Mary said, let it be to me as you have said. To me, those are such powerful words. Let it be to me as you have said. As we saw in all the people that participated today, they all had their own will. They all had their own way of doing things. We had the moonbeam guy or whatever, you know, that, you know the magi, you know, and the... You, you got the guy that wants to be Herod. He wants to interject, do things his way. And, and I think that's a lot of people in the world today, in the church even. We want to do things our way. We don't want to pay attention to what, what God has said through his word to us. We want to do things according to what we feel is right. But the thing that when Barry said, let it be for me as you have said, that is a powerful declaration of trust. Because for her to say that, she put her life on the line because to be pregnant before you got married meant death. You know, I mean, if Joseph would have put her away, you know, they could have taken her out and stoned her because being pregnant and not married. But she stepped out in faith. Let it be with you as you have said. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust the Lord in this. 
And unlike some of the people up here today, she believed she was created for bigger things than just herself. And I just think of the lady that played Mary. Very humble in the sense that she wasn't quite sure if she was good enough to play that role, that if she had found favor in God. But I'm here today to tell you that we have all found favor with God. Because he sent his son Jesus to die for every one of us. So that every one of us could ha experience the life of Christ. The life in Christ. Life more abundantly that he talks about in his word. But what about you? Do you believe that you were created for bigger, th bigger things than you're just yourself? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he created you to do something incredible in this life? Do you believe that you can carry the story with you as you go? Last Sunday, I, I challenged you to... The kingdom of God is like whatever you do. And as I said, the kingdom of God is like a mold maker, because that's what I used to do. Or the kingdom of God is like a plumber, because that's what I told the guy at the plumbing store. Or the kingdom of God is like an electrician. What is the kingdom of God like to you, and what's your story, and are you willing to carry it out? Because that's what matters. Can you live out the kingdom of God? Can you live out the gospel every day? Can you live and breathe? Can you say, let it be to me as you have said? Why don't we stand this morning and pray? Can we get our focus off of our own selves and on Jesus? Dear Heavenly Father, we're here today, Lord, standing before you. We're the people that Jesus came for. We're the ones who Jesus came and was born in a mess so that he could take our mess. And maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Ron, I, I haven't been focused on Jesus. I've been focused on my own thing. And I need to get focused on Christ today. I need to, to get back or I need to get to the Lord today. I need to line up with Jesus today. If that's you today, just raise your hand right now because I want to pray for you. That's you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Yes. All right. Praise you, Father. I'm going to ask if you would just take one more step. If you would just come to the front so that we could pray for you today. Because it's a big step. It's, it's life-changing. Just come if you raise your hand today. We want to pray for you. It's not something to be embarrassed about. This is a big thing. You, come on, and I'm going to ask the altar workers if you'd come and stand behind them. Let's pray together with them today. Anybody else, you can come right now. I'm going to ask if you guys would just repeat after me. Okay. Everybody, just say this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son Jesus, that he died for me, and that he rose from the dead. Jesus, Forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Make me right in you today. I surrender my life. I give everything to you, Jesus. I give you my attention today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big clap today, huh? You're in the body of Christ. Now, when we had the angel, it says all the angels are rejoicing over you today. All the angels in heaven are rejoicing today for you. And so, you know, I'd like you to just turn around and let them pray for you. And I just want to say a prayer over the congregation right now. Father, I thank you for the... These men and women of God, I pray, Father God, that we would not forget the reason for this season that we're in, Lord. But, Lord, that you would just cover each one of us as we go our way today. Lord, that we would, 
we would keep our focus on Jesus. Now, Lord, that we would remember what you have done for us. And I pray protection, I pray blessing, and I pray health over these men and women of God today. That, Lord, that as we go today, we go in victory. We go on the truth of who you are in us. We thank you, Father, for sending your son Jesus to, for us. And we give you praise today. And everybody said, Amen.